Hey everybody, it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a necklace today and I'm going to use some of the beads and bindings that came in the most recent bargain bead box. The one from March 2024. It's called the Seafoam Sunrise Collection. I'll put a link in the corner of this video and in the description box below to the unboxing video I did for this subscription in case you want to watch it where I go over everything that came in the box. Uh, I have a coupon code. It's Teresa2 and I'll put it on the screen here and in the description box below, along with a link to the page to sign up for the subscription if you're interested. The coupon code will save you $2 off your first box if you sign up. This is just a really great value box, and their boxes are always so beautiful, and I thought this one was particularly beautiful. <laughs> uh, in here I've got the 8mm fl uh, matte flower Amazonite beads that came in the box. And here I've got the 8 by 6 millimeter crystal faceted rondelles that came in the box and it was a peaches and cream mix and I love these so much. <laughs> I love them so much that I went on their sister's site when they put their extras up for sale and I bought three more strands of them so I've got a lot of these. Uh, and here I've got the eight millimeter Amazonite beads that came in the box, the not matte ones. And here I've got the three millimeter faceted round Amazonite beads that came in the box. And here I've got the 10 millimeter matte agate beads that came in the box. I've got the spacer beads that came in the box. I've got some larger spacer beads from my stash that I'm going to use around these bigger beads. I'm going to use these 110 uh, topaz colored seed beads to space out the beads. I've got some findings in here. I've got two of the chandelier components that came in the box. I've got a lobster clasp some 4 millimeter jump rings, one 8 millimeter jump ring, three, no, six <laughs> wire guardians, and six 2 by 2 crimp tubes. A couple of pieces of the chain that came in the box. I have a larger a piece of chain from my stash that has a little bit larger links in it that I'm going to use to uh, as an extender. I've got a lobster clasp. I've got one of the rondelles that I'm going to hang off the extender as a dangle, and I've got a head pin to do that with. I think that's everything that's in there. I'm going to be using my Softflex beading wire in fine and this is 21 strand and it's a copper color. Uh, I've got my bead stoppers. I'm going to be using my chain nose pliers, my tweezer pliers, my round nose pliers, both pairs of my bent chain nose pliers, both pairs of my crimping pliers, both pairs of my cutters, I'll be using my flat nose pliers just a little bit to open the extender chain uh, at the end when I put the little dangle on it. And I've already used my memory wire cutters to cut my chain. I think that's everything. Uh, I'll try to put links to everything I can find links for in the description box below, everything that didn't come in the box. Oh, and I've got my little New Orleans shot glass that I'm going to put my wire in while I cut it off. He'll be mad if I leave him out and don't introduce him. He's getting full. I'm going to have to empty him. <laughs> so hold on. Let me get some of this out of the way and I'll get started. Okay, I'm ready to start here now. And this is going to be a three-strand necklace. So I've already strung up my longest strand. And I'm going to show you what it is. And then I'm going to crimp it. And then I'll just do the other two. I'll string them up and crimp them off camera. And then I'll show you what they are when I get that done. So, um, I've got 11 O's between all the beads, except for the ones here in the, at the focal part. So I've got 11 O's between all the beads. I've got one of these brown rondelles with a bead cap face in it. Uh, one of these matte flower Amazonite beads. Another brown rondelle with a bead cap face in it. Uh, when I... I think when I went over my materials, I called these bead caps spacer beads, but obviously they're bead caps. <laughs> and then I've got an 8mm Amazonite bead. And then I've got one of these sort of peach colored rondelles with a bead cap face in it. And then another Amazonite bead, another peach colored bead with the bead cap face in it and opposite the way this one's facing here. Then another Amazonite bead. Then I've got one of the 10 millimeter matte uh, agate beads with some of my bead caps around them. An Amazonite bead. And then I have three of the matte agate 10 millimeter beads with bead caps around them, but I don't have any 11 O's between these. And then I have an, uh, on this side, I just have this same thing 
that I have on this side. I've just mirrored uh, this side. It's exactly like that side. So now I'm going to crimp it on the end of it here. There it is. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to take my crimp tube and put it on here. And my wire guardian. Go down the other channel of my wire guardian and back into my crimp tube. I hold my wires apart so they don't get crossed because when we crimp, we want both of the wires. Now I've lost track of it, I think it's crossed in there. <laughs> We want both wires to land in their own little individual channel and it won't do that if they're crossed. So I'm going to hold my wires apart. And I'm going to take my uh, crimping pliers and I'm going to use that part that has the tooth. And I'm going to lay my tooth on top of my crimp tube. Trying to get it to turn around here and face the way I need it to. It's always wanting to twi twist around on me. Now I'm going to squeeze. And that folds, puts a little dent in the crimp there and puts each little wire in its own little individual channel. Now I'm going to go into the part here uh, that has, they have, there's three half circles on each side here. I'm going to go in the one in the middle because that's the one for the 2 by 2 crimp tubes. I'm going to lay my crimp in there. And squeeze. A good tight squeeze, and now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to cut off my extra wire, and now I'm going to push all this down, and I'm going to cut it off my spool. I usually just leave it attached to my spool. I kind of feel like I don't waste as much wire that way. Now I'm going to take my other crimp tube and put it on here and my other wire guardian I tuck this little wire guardian in I didn't seem to have to do that other one but this one I think needs to be tucked in a little bit there now I'm going to go down the other channel of my wire guardian and back through my crimp tube get it through there. I'm missing my crimp tube. There we go. And on this side I try to go through a bead to get my hands out of the way and uh, to center that my wire guardian over the last bead if I can. There's one of these strands that I'm one, one of my strands is going to be entirely just those little tiny three millimeter beads and seed beads and there's no way I'll be able to get back through one of those so I won't be able to do that on that one but I try to if I can so that I can get my hands out of the way and center my wire guardian over that last bead I try to keep my wires from being crossed I want to get through this bead and this bead cap take my tweezer pliers and that to come through there. I'm going to pull my, hold on to my wire card in and I'm going to pull my wire through and I want to make sure there's no slack in my piece but I don't want it to be too tight either. So I usually leave it cold up like that and that usually keeps it from being too tight but I want to make sure it's not too loose because I want my bead caps to be fitting against my beads nice and snugly there. So now I'm gonna. Sometimes you need about 12 hands to do all this. <laughs> now I'm gonna take my crimping pliers again and use the part with the tooth. Lay the tooth on top of my crimp bead or crimp tube. And I'm gonna squeeze. 
Now I'm going to turn it and go to the part with the half circles again and squeeze again. Give it a good tight squeeze. And now I'm going to tug. That's good. So now I'm going to take my cutters and cut off my extra wire. So that's going to be my longest strand. So hold on and I'll get the other strands done. And when I come back, I'll show you what the pattern is with the beads and everything. And then we'll put it all together. So I'll be back. Okay, I've got all my strands made now. And this strand is going to be my next to longest strand. It's going to be in the middle. And I've got, uh, it's all just the 3 millimeter fasted beads and seed beads. So I've got three of the 3 millimeter beads, a seed bead, one of the three millimeter beads, and a seed bead, and I've got that repeated four times. And then I've got five of the three millimeter beads, a seed bead, one three millimeter bead, a seed bead, seven of the three millimeter beads, a seed bead, one three millimeter bead, a seed bead, five of the three millimeter beads, a seed bead, one three millimeter bead, a seed bead, and then I have my three three millimeter beads with one repeated four times on this side, just like on the other side. And then my shortest strand, uh, I have seed beads between all the beads, and I have one of these uh, sort of half brown and half kind of uh, opal colored rondelle with a bead cap face in it, one of the flower Amazonite beads, three of those same kind of rondelles with bead caps on either side of them, another one of the flower Amazonite beads, and then I have five of these uh, kind of opaque, uh, I don't really know what color that would be, maybe <laughs> a little bit darker peach, I'm not sure. I've got bead caps around the ones I've got bead caps around this one, no bead caps around this one, bead cap around this one, no bead caps around this one, bead caps around this one, and I don't have any seed beads between this section. And then on this side, I just have the same exact thing that I have on this side that I've just mirrored it. And this strand, after I crimped it and put my wire guards and everything on, it came to just a tiny bit over nine inches. And this one is about seven and a half inches. And this one is a tiny bit over six inches. I try to usually put about an inch and a half between when I do a multi-strand uh, necklace. So now I'm going to put it together. I've got my chandelier components here. And i got some four millimeter jump rings. And I'm going to just take a jump ring. Well, I think some of these jump rings are not the same size. I got these out of a... Yeah, some of these jump rings are a little bit bigger. I'll have to... Hold on, let me get some more jump rings. I, uh, several... Uh, one box last year we had copper findings in it and had a, a mix of different sizes of jump rings. And I got this these out of them, and I think I must have got them mixed up because that's obviously bigger. than I thought they were all the same size, but they're not. Hold on, let me get some more jump rings, and I'll be back. Okay, I've got some more bead caps out here now. I know these are all the same size because <laughs> I, I got these out of my stash, not from that other box. So I'm going to open one of these 4mm jump rings. <clears throat> Thread on my longest strand. Try to keep a hold of it. Let me get these other strands out of the way before I get them mixed up. That'll be exactly like something I would do. I'm going to put that on there. I'm going to put it on the outside of my chandelier link here. Close my jump ring back. Sure, I get it closed back really well. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this other side. Put 
it on the outer link of my chandelier component. Close my jump ring back really well. Now I'm going to take my middle strand and take a jump ring. Open it up. Put it on here. Thread it onto the well. <laughs> thread it onto the middle part of my component. Close it back really well. Do the same thing on this side. Probably should have used a little bit bigger jump ring. These little four millimeters are trying to give me trouble. Okay, now I'm going to take my shortest strand. And another... Four millimeter jump ring. I'll try putting it on the component this time first and see if that helps. Yeah, I think that was easier. I might have spoke too soon. <laughs> I've got to get it shut now, don't I? Do this on this other side. Hmm. Would help if I could keep hold of it. Close that back. Now, I'm going to lay the make sure I've not got anything twisted, and I don't think I have. So, now I'm going to put my chain on. I've got a couple of pieces of chain. These are about five inches each. This is the chain that came in the box. And I'm going to take another four millimeter jump ring. it up, put my chain on, and thread on my chandelier component, close my jump ring back, and you want to make sure to get these uh, chandelier components facing the same way because they're not double sided, they're different on the back. So now I'm going to take another four millimeter jump ring, put this piece of chain on, thread it onto this one. I'm going to take another four millimeter jump ring <clears throat> and open it up. Put 
put it on this end of my chain and put on my lobster clasp. And now I've got an eight millimeter jump ring for my lobster to clasp onto. I think it's an eight, it might be a 10. This looks awfully big. <laughs> put my chain on here and I've got a little piece of extender chain that's about two inches now put that a little more close it back <clears throat> okay now all I have to do is make my little dangle so hold on, I'll get my head pin and my little rondelle and I'll be back. Okay, I've got my head pin here and I've got my rondelle. These are really long head pins. <laughs> I hate to waste such a long head pin, but it's really the only one I've got that's long enough for me to be able to make a wrap loop, which is what I want to do. I'm going to go to the very tip of my pliers, bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle, around those pliers in the crook of the bend, around those pliers facing me, Bend the wire back until it hits the bead. Rotate the pliers till they're facing the table. Take this part under until it hits the bottom of the tool. Kink the wire back until the loop is centered over the bead. Like that, and that usually stands my little piece of wire almost straight up there. I take my bent chain those pliers and hold on to my loop. Bring my wire down a little bit. head pin so long I can probably wrap this with my hand I don't know though it's pretty stiff I better probably better use my other pair of bench and those pliers I'm gonna wrap and make sure to get that first wrapping under the bottom of the loop not over the top of the bottom of the loop I just want to wrap till there's no more room to wrap I'm going to take my cutters and I use a different pair of cutters for craft, power, craft wire and head pins and eye pins than I do for bead string and wire. And I'm going to take these crimping pliers and I use the little half circles on each end to tuck in the burrs when I cut off wire. And now I'm going to take my flat nose pliers and open the last link on my extender chain. I like to do this if I can rather than directly wrapping it to the chain because I'm not very good at directly wrapping to anything. So <laughs> if I can get out of it, I will. So I'm just going to close that back really well. there's my little dangle so hold on let me see if I can get all this laid out and I'll be back okay there's my multi strand necklace made with some of the beads and findings that came in the most recent bargain bead box the one for March 2024 called the Seafoam Sunrise Collection like I said this is just a really beautiful box but their boxes are always beautiful and it's they're just really a tremendous value I'm always able to get many many pieces of jewelry out of one box like I said, if you're not subscribed to the box and you decide you want to be, that coupon code will save you $2 off your first box if you sign up. I hope you all have enjoyed this video. As always, thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked and commented on my videos. I have a website where I sell my jewelry. I also sell gift cards and some extra beads and findings that I have. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll leave a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested along with a link to my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care.